If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our goal in the question is to find the frequency with which this block is oscillating. And it turns out in order to do that, what we need to do is figure out the effective spring constant of this two spring system. Now, of course, the effective spring constant has to obey Hooke's law. So we could set the effective spring constant equal to F divided by some displacement delta X. Delta X would represent the total elongation of the spring. And of course, F is the force exerted on the mass. We can imagine that the spring on the left is elongated by an amount that we can call delta XL. And similarly, the spring on the right is elongated by an amount that we can call delta XR. Now, the following two key ideas will hold. We know that the left-hand spring is exerting a force whose magnitude would be K times delta XL, according to Hooke's law, on the right-hand spring. And similarly, the right-hand spring is exerting a force of K times delta XR on the left-hand spring. Now, according to Newton's third law, these two forces must be equal to each other. We can then see that the spring constant K would divide out from that equation. And therefore, the total elongation of the left-hand spring must equal the total elongation of the right-hand spring. Now, if we go back to the picture, we can see that the grand total of elongation of the spring is the sum of these two elongations. In other words, the total elongation can be written as the sum of the individual elongations. Now, we just concluded that delta XL is equal to delta XR. So we can actually replace delta XR with delta XL. And therefore, the total elongation of the spring could be written as 2 delta XL. So we now have an expression for the total elongation of the spring. The force F exerted on the mass, going back to the diagram if we look carefully, we can see that the force exerted on the mass would be the force of the left-hand spring. Well, the force of the left-hand spring would equal the spring constant multiplied by delta XL. So with this expression for the force acting on the mass, and with this expression for the total elongation of the spring, we can plug in to find the effective spring constant. And when we make those substitutions, we can of course see that delta XL will cancel, leaving us with an overall effective spring constant of K divided by two. Now that we have that, we can easily calculate the frequency of the oscillation. Since we know that the frequency is equal to the following expression on the right hand side, we've substituted in the effective spring constant for the K. Now, of course, we're going to replace that K effective with K divided by two. And algebraically, that two can actually shift to the denominator. And finally, we're ready to plug in the known values for K which was given in the question, as well as the mass of the block, which is also stated. And when we simplify that, we get 18.2, and the unit of frequency, of course, is hertz, or cycles per second. And that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click on the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to submit an answer to it on YouTube.